It is uh, 9.46 a.m. Today is November 9th. You're listening to Insperato Projecto. While I am while I am speaking to you right now, currently there are two uh, two fires going on out there in the world. One in the Thousand Oaks area, apparently, and one that's out near Malibu, I guess. So both of these are happening simultaneously. Every time that the wind picks up, anytime I notice the wind pick up, I start thinking in my brain, "Uh uh-oh. You know, it's not one of those things that, it's not one of those things that I definitely don't want to predict the future of. It's not one of those things I want to predict the future of. It's something where it seems like, I've I've just noticed a pattern that when those winds come through, we tend to get these fires. Now, I don't know how a fire just starts all by itself. I don't know how that is. People say that it gets so hot up there that the, that the sun actually starts the fire on the ground. I didn't know that that was even something that could actually just happen. Uh, so... The point of this podcast is not to talk about the fires. The point of this is to finally get out my review of Lamplight City, which is a video game. Thank you, Emily Morganti, for offering me this opportunity. I've been growing a rapport with Emily Morganti uh, over the past couple years. I first... uh, Well... I'm not going to get into the video games I've already... Well, what the hell? Yeah. So the first... So I've reviewed Thimbleweed Park and Unforeseen Incidents and Lamplight City. I'm still getting through um, rights. What is it called? Something of the rights. Rights of the something. Something of the rights. I did these... uh, Reviews in exchange for reviewing these awesome video games on Inspirato Projecto. They give me a, a copy, a review copy. So this is something that I could only have dreamed of. And for this to be coming in with a bunch of point-and-click adventure games. That's a cool thing, too. I get to play these point-and-click adventure games and... Reminisce, you know, sort of relive back during the days when I was a little kid playing Maniac Mansion and Zach McCracken. Well, now this whole other slew of interesting point and click kind of games are coming out. And it's it's really quite fascinating. Oh, the Unavowed. That was the other one I did. Unavowed, Unforeseen Incidents, Thimbleweed Park. Stars of the Right, or Right of the Stars? I forgot what that is. But Lamplight City, that's what we're getting to today. That's the last one that I I finally... It took me a while. Um, one of the things that I think is important to remember to do during these games is to save your game frequently. Save your game frequently. You never know when you're going to come across a major... Decision. I mean, each of these games, what's interesting, each of these games as I play them, they just keep improving more and more upon the idea of having to live with your consequences. That's something that went, went on with Lamplight City. Lamplight City, I was almost going to say was a nightmare in some respects. Not a nightmare in the terms of like, oh God, what do I have to do with this? A nightmare in terms of like that, 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 that trepidation that can come from making decisions on a video game. There were all these little things that, you know, for instance, there's a, there's a, like a hot water heater or something that you got to fix. And that was something that, thank God I had saved beforehand. Um, Hello, you're the one with the art, right? You're the one who's out here drawn before. Yeah, hi, I'm Kurt. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Oh, you're not allowed to shake hands? Oh, I love your art. So, I hope you're still doing it. You still doing it? Yeah, yeah. Good. Well, it's good seeing you again. I gotta get up to the grocery store. 
So some of you might remember I had that woman on the podcast. Um, she was she was drawing some extraordinary art. It was really cool. You could look through it at different ways, and you could see different. Um, like you could see a UFO in there. You could see all kinds of interesting stuff. Anyway, back to Lamplight City. The the interesting thing about this game is that you're that it's almost kind of the decisions are slightly trepidatious, particularly when you see when you see an outcome that well you didn't anticipate. Uh, the graphics are awesome; they're fantastic. The voice acting is fantastic. It takes place in the jeez. I want to say 1800s. I mean, yeah, I want to say 1800s. Some of the big inventions that they have going on in this game is uh, blimps, like you'll see blimps. Uh, there's something called Aetherium. Aeth- aethericity. I think that's what they call it. It's like electricity, but it's a- a- like the ether. Aethericity. And they're using that to power stuff. The radios, and there's this big political uh, discussion going on in the game where you got the two, the two aspects of it where people are, they want to see more progress being made. They want to see more machines building things and, and making it easier on the humans. Well, but then you got what goes along with that is you got the humans are getting hurt by the machines, um, dying, exploding. Uh, so then you got the other side of people who are going, no, 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 no. These machines are taking away our jobs. No more machines. No more machines. And there's a there's actually an election within the game, and you have to choose. You have to vote. You have to vote. And depending on how you vote, it's going to actually alter how your conversations with people go. There might be those who... See, after you vote, every person you talk with, you can talk with them about politics. And then, depending on who you voted for, that's who you are most likely going to be, you know, defending, so to speak, within the political um, um, conversations you're having with folks. There are parts where you have to interview people about the case. See, some of these cases, uh, sometimes you'll ask a question, like I noticed that I, I would save the game. Sometimes I would, so I would save a game before I did something. I would ask someone a question, and then I would find out a particular result. And then I'd go back to that point, right bef- like right before I made a particular decision. And then sometimes I would notice that that, um, that ability wasn't there. It's really intriguing. Like, uh, there's a part with, um, a voodoo lady who I came across. And, um, I, I looked in her back room. I saw her voodoo stuff. And I had sat there thinking, okay, do I bring this up to her? Do I bring up? Because you, you can have the choice of telling her, you know, that you, that you saw what you saw in the other room. You can actually mention to her, you can ask her, ask her like, well, yeah, what's this mentioned to her? What's the, uh, what's the deal with the voodoo stuff? And it's really interesting because throughout the game, there are different areas that you can go to for different information. So you can find, you know, this is, this is actually a very important thing with this particular game is keeping aware of of your surroundings and and really looking at everything everything there could be things hidden behind a panel on a wall for instance there could but you, but you have to like look at everything you move your mouse around it and it'll show you whether you can sort of activate it in some sense and uh, sometimes too so it'll so sometimes it'll show you just that one thing and then uh, but then if you relook at it you'll notice that it has something 
there's something else to it that you didn't that you didn't notice before. There's an extra added. There's a, it's something to it. Now you can actually pick up that thing. Maybe before you were only looking at it. Now you can actually pick up that thing, and then you use it for something. But sometimes you can't pick up a thing. Uh, until you have a particular conversation with someone, then you'll see that thing. I've noticed there were times where I, I so let's say, um, I'd be going along, and then I'd, uh, let's say, I, let's say, let's say I end up finding out, so let's say I have that conversation with someone, and then I ended up coming across that thing in there, and I go, okay, there it is, cool, now it's, now it's, it's enabling me to notice it and pick it up. So there have been times where I've gone, you know, let's say I've, I saved a game, I, I, I did, I did those, those aspects, and then the next time I come back around to play that game, I go first for those specific things. Well, no, it won't let you do that specific thing until after you do the other thing where you got to talk to the person, and then all of a sudden now here's this, this, this possibility. You might hear someone talking about, for instance, you might hear someone talk about a aethericity, uh, a and aethericity is sort of like the um, the the uh, power that they use. They're they're converting this special the ether, if you will, of the universe. They're they're finding a way of using that itself as a power source. So, unless you talk to someone about it, let's say there's a there's a there's a woman who uses ethericity with her plants and her plants grow at an alarming rate. You talk with her about it, about ethericity and now you can have a discussion about it with someone else. Or now, let's say now that you had that discussion with her, now you notice a book on the shelf that talks about ethericity, whereas maybe you wouldn't have been able to pick up that book before, you wouldn't have noticed it before. So there are a lot of little intricate things, but it is worth it. Like the the going through those things. I mean, that's what makes the whole that's what makes the whole thing so enjoyable. That's what makes the victory so sweet when you solve a puzzle because you went through all that other crazy stuff to get to that point. And it's uh, it's it's just a great game. I really I look forward to more of them. I think you could do more of these things. There are all kinds of decisions that you make. I mean, right in the beginning of of it, there there are some major decisions that that uh, I mean, I had to. I so I I played it one way, and then I went back and I made a different decision. Uh, some of these outcomes are similar. Some of them are the same. Some of them. Are are uh, quite different. Don Francisco, what's this all about? Kona blend, huh? It's just, it's just, it's just astounding to me to think that these video games can be created these days where. You can really see the consequences of your decisions. It's crazy because you're there's like this double-edged sword kind of thing, where while you're playing it, you're going, "Wow, this is so dynamic. This is so cool. This is something I have not experienced before." Having to. Um, having to be accountable to particular decisions. And then and what I know sometimes, too, is that some of these... Um, so, for instance, sometimes with games, you got the idea of being able to... Like, you'll see a dialogue list, for instance, of different dialogues that you can choose to say to someone. The particular particular dialogues, even that can alter how this person is going to interact with you for the rest of the game, or others for that matter. 
So based on your dialogue choices, it reminds me slightly of kind of like Fallout, the game Fallout. So you have these dialogue choices, and in other games, you'd be able to go back through those those dialogue choices and and pick them, even though you picked other dialogue choices. You know, a lot of times these games, they let you do that, go back and say those things. Well, with this particular game, you, you cannot, you, you, you cannot uh, utilize all of them in particular instances. You really have to just do what you can with what you will, and then if you say the thing that the uh, other character doesn't like and they don't want to collaborate with you, now you're just, you know, you're just kind of in, in trouble, so to speak. Or, or rather, just basically you're kind of where you're at. You might, there have been times where um, I was going to talk to someone, but I brought up a particular subject before I brought up a different subject. Like, it, it was like something where, um, if you bring up one particular subject to the character, they might not be cooperative with you and they might not answer that or say get the hell out of here get out of my place leave me alone um, so there's there's kind of an, a science and an art to it that's why it's important to save your game because you'll know not to ask those questions or, or to ask other questions first All right, now I'm going to pay for this razzmatazz, and uh, we'll talk. We'll talk more later. All right, we are back. So, uh, let's see. So, okay. So, one of the other things I want to say about Lamplight City is that the cases that you're studying, as I've said, you're a detective. Um, you got a buddy who's kind of like your, you're kind of like the Sherlock. He's kind of the Watson. He's got a lot of great insight. Your character has a lot of great insight. It's uh, it's fun to watch it all unfold. It really is. It's really cool to see how sometimes, okay, so you solve a case, let's say at the beginning of the game. And then sometimes there are cases within the cases. There are things within the things that you gotta um, solve. So. It's it's really intriguing the way that they do it. So, by the time you solve this third or fourth case, the, the what's so funny is there are newspapers. Each morning there's a newspaper. There's the you know the the, the news of what's going on in the day, and a lot of cases you'll see that the thing that's in the newspaper is basically what your next assignment is going to be about. And so, um, your character has friends who, um, you know, you, you work for the police force, and so they give you tips and tricks, little little things that you can listen to that'll help you along your journey, and they will remind you of certain things. You can look in, you got like a case book, where you can look in there and see what the next thing is. Or what you, like, if you need to <clears throat> interview someone, like, oh, remember to talk to this person about that thing, or, oh, maybe you need to go look at this crime scene a little bit more. That's actually one of the instances where, when I was talking earlier, where you might know about something that's going to be there, but uh, you still have to go through the motions, if you will, of the way that the game wants you to discover it, so to speak. So... There's a, there's a crime scene, and there's a particular crime scene where I, just by looking around, I saw that there was like a grating in the ground. And, and then the, my partner, he goes, oh, maybe there's something down there. So, well, how do you get down there? Well, you need tools. Where do you find the tools? 
you gotta talk to the guy who works for the who's a plumber, basically. So then he he you bring him up there, and then he he checks it out. You cannot simply just go there. Let's see. There, there's a, a very interesting particular order, and the game does not play you like I don't want to say an idiot, but it doesn't hold your hand. It doesn't tell you, oh yeah, you know. Remember, you gotta do this. <laughs> I mean, in some ways it does. In some ways it doesn't. So you're kind of just you're. Just by pure, just trial and error kind of thing. There was a part where I had to fix a, a hot water heater that breaks down. And I, you know, I had to save that game before, I had to save that before I continued any, any further with it. Because <clears throat> each time, I was doing something weird, something wonky. So by the fifth or sixth time, I finally figured out what was keeping me from fixing it? Or what did I need to do in order to fix it? Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. Hi there. Hi there. So if you like detective-type games or, mo or movies or books, uh, if you like stuff that takes place way back when... Almost like steampunk. Basically, it's kind of like a steampunk world, but not in an obvious way. Not in a, like, we are steampunk. It's just kind of like, you get the idea that, yeah, this is part of this world. Kitty. Kitty, kitty. Oh, hi. Mm, you're so cute. And then you end up coming across characters that resemble other characters. And then you start thinking, oh, maybe this guy killed this guy because he looked like that guy. And maybe there was actually the story behind it is that guy. Maybe that guy is someone that needs to be paid attention to. Maybe that guy is the bad guy. Someone else thought he looked like someone else. So they killed him. That's the thing, too. You might solve a crime, but it's not, you know, the best answer, so to speak, to solving the crime. Like, you go, oh, man, if if, if this person, if, this, if I say that this person did it, you know, are they actually innocent? They might be innocent. Because you can actually go to the police station and lay out the evidence. And there were a couple of instances like that where afterwards I just felt bad. Like, I don't know if I brought the right person to justice. I felt like there was more to explore. I, and, you know, when you download this on Steam, because that's where I got this, through Steam, online on Steam, it shows you how, how many codes or how many little things that you found throughout the game. Even though I finished this game, I only got, like, what did it say? Something like 20% of it done. So that makes me wonder, what the hell did I miss? Like, I finally finished the game. Yet, there's more to solve. Um, it's interesting how it all loops back around. I'm trying to speak as cryptic about this as possible without giving anything away. Ideally, it entices you to get the game, so maybe we can actually talk about, you know, oh yeah, what did you like about this, or what did you say here, you know, who, who did you end up voting for in the game, and then how did that alter the outcome of your interactions that you had with people, and, like, it's just intriguing. so intriguing I really hope to see more by these guys watch it I watch it I W A let's see we're going to bring up the game right now oh no watch it I I think those guys did uh, unavowed let's see let's see 
let's see. I don't want to give the wrong credit to the wrong folks. All right, so here we go. Oh, Application Systems Heidelberg. Grundislav Games. Grundislav Games. Most of what you see in here, I'll let you listen to some of the stuff. So we're going to hit start new game. Just imagine a murky... Oh, here we go. It's only funny when I do it to you. What's the matter? Have a rough night? Ah, uh, a bit too much Bollingworth ale is all. That stuff really creeps up on you. Sorry I couldn't join you, but I was long overdue for a quiet night in with Addie. That's fine. There'll be plenty of other opportunities. <laughs> Hell, maybe Adelaide can even join us. It's been ages since she last drank me under the table. I'm afraid she mostly sticks to tea these days. Miles, what exactly is it we're looking into? Uh, I may have dozed off during the briefing. <laughs> Honestly, Bill, one of these days Snelling's gonna notice. No, he won't. Why do you think they put him behind a desk? The man couldn't find his own backside with a pair of pliers and a lantern. Very funny. Anyway, it's a burglary at the Hamburg flower shop. A burglary, eh? How dull. Eh, at least we'll have enough time to get a drink afterwards. You seem awfully certain of that. I am. In fact, I'd bet the devil my head that we're done within the hour. Well, the devil's gonna be disappointed that his winnings are so meager. Ah, we've arrived. After you, Bill. The city of New Bretagne, borough of Chamundi, 1844, Chum Chamundi, I think they call it Chamundi. So they're getting out of a carriage. Thank you. Keep the change. And so our night of excitement begins. You, more than anyone else, should know that there's rarely a dull night in Chumley. I have a feeling tonight will be the exception. Until we get to the pub, that is. Keep your mind on the case, Bill. Now let's get a move on. All right, so <clears throat> you got to hear a little bit of what's going on with these guys. Um... So it's it, it's really cool. I, I mean, I had like two different choices that I could have said to him there in the car. Probably now looking back on it, in hindsight, I probably to to be nice to to really help you get your mind around this a little easier. Probably would have been nice for me to actually uh, tell you what those choices were and actually consult you on those decisions. It's, it's really interesting to see the way that these video games are unfolding more and more and more and, and, and putting the, these decisions in your hands where, you know, oh, if you say the wrong thing to the wrong person, you know, you beat up the wrong guy or you what, whatever, make, make, the, make the wrong comment to the wrong person, you're going to be having to deal with that consequence later on. It's brilliant. It's awesome. It's an exciting way, I think. I think it's a great way of teaching kids uh, consequence. Look, you do this, you, 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 you act this way, that leads to this. You, you, you do this, um, it leads to this. So ideally, what I'm hoping, and not just kids, I'm talking about adults too. Everybody needs to kind of learn the, uh, 
the the way the all the possibilities in which their actions in which their 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 words um can can move along out there in the world everyone really you know we all when we keep that in mind when we're mindful of that our intentions become even sharper they become even greater we start to uh You know, when we when we rely on our instincts, the more that we start relying on our instincts and seeing seeing what happens with the outcome of those decisions when we follow our instincts, and we make that direct correlation, that direct connection to it. Now, we've gotten so much more uh, in tune with it that. We can kind of, it's kind of like predicting the future, so to speak. It gets to be something like that. People will be like, what are you predicting the future? And you're going, well, yeah, I suppose, kind of. It's also, yes, I am. In addition to that, I'm reading a vibe that's here right now. And I've, you know, uh, gotten such a good rapport with that vibe that it's, it rewards me in this way. So, folks, check out Lamplight Lamp Light City. I think you'll appreciate it. Lamplight City. It's a... Uh, it's fantastic. It's a great game. Now that I'm talking with you more and more about this, I kind of want to I wanna go back and replay it. I want to see what the heck I'm missing on this. Take care, and may your imagination explode your mind. Ein, ein, ein.